All right, guys. Well, if you're watching this video, you probably already seen the intro with me um, halfway setting up this Edge Juice with Attitude and installing it. Um, I was planning to do an entire install video step by step. I was going right by the manual and I was just going to walk it through with you guys and just do literally step by step and, you know, explain everything as I went along. Uh, but my, my phone was giving me issues that day and I wasn't able to like, get all the video and after messing my phone for a little while, I just kind of gave up on it because obviously I was pretty eager to get this thing installed and it was a cold day out. My hands were frozen, so I, I just kind of gave up. So sorry you didn't get an install video, but, um, you know, that was my plan, but at least I could show you guys kind of like how this thing works and, and kind of give you my, my review on it. I've had this installed now for, I would say, probably two and a half weeks, maybe a little longer now. Um, so let me fire this truck up and we'll talk a little more about it. Okay, so first thing you do when you fire it up, you'll see this thing go through like a loading screen. Checking devices, protocol, loading gauges. Loads up pretty quick and then you're in. So now, first thing I'll go through with you guys is uh, this light here. There's a yellow indicator light which tells you if you're defueling or not. So whenever that yellow light is on, that means you're defueling. Um, for anybody who doesn't know what defueling is, it's a setup inside the computer that allows the computer to back down the um, the fuel adjustment. So basically like your, your fuel timing and whatever you may have added from your program. See, like I'm on five right now. So whatever level you're on, it's pretty much gonna defuel it back to stock. So when this defuel light comes on, what you can do is you can look at your back down. Your back down is how much is defueling. So I'm at 100%, which means basically this truck is running bone stock right now. So the reason that's happening is because currently the engine coolant temp is not warm enough for it to allow for fueling. Now you can disable this, so it has no effect on it and it, it won't back down at all or defuel at all when it's cold. But obviously it's a good thing to have that on because you don't want to be beating on the engine when it's cold. Um, you know, the more fuel you add, the more heat you add. And the more heat you add, the faster those pistons are going to expand in the cylinders. And what happens is if they expand faster than the cylinder walls, what will happen is it will end up scoring your cylinder walls and scoring your pistons. And eventually you'll have compression loss. So it's always good to, to let your engine warm up properly. The stock setting is, I think, 150. So that's why I got the screen set up like this. I got my engine coolant temp and my back down. So what happens is as this thing rises, you'll be able to watch the back down drop. So once it starts hitting around like 145, you'll see this maybe go to like 80%. And by 150, it's down to maybe like 30%. And then by like 155, 160, this is at 0%. And then that light will go off, indicating that you have no back down and whatever setting you have it on, it's full fueling for that setting. It'll be 100%. So now you guys see, I'm at 132 now, and the back down is now at 91%. So if I was driving this and it was warming up quicker, the back down would be coming down faster. So let me go in here so I can explain this a little better with this back down indicator light. I'm gonna go on the main menu, settings. Then you wanna go to juice settings, and then you wanna go to back down settings. Okay, so the yellow light is a back down indicator. Okay, so here's your three back down abilities, okay? So you have the choice to back down or defuel at these given ranges. Okay, so if you wanted to back down while the engine's cold and not add any more fueling or tuning while the engine's cold, just turn this cold ECT defuel on. If you don't want it on and you don't care about, you know, say you're just gonna drive it gentle or say you just don't care about your motor and you're just gonna wrap on it when it's cold anyway. And you can just turn that off and it will not defuel at all when it's cold. I leave it on because as I explained before, it's good for the engine. So the next thing that you can defuel for is your max boost set point. I have mine set at 40. So basically the minute it hits 40, anything over 40, it'll start defueling itself. That way you're not able to exceed the boost set point that you put. Um, and that basically protects your turbo or your engine. So I know these engines are good for about 40 PSI before you gotta put head studs in them. So I leave mine at 40. 
Um, also, the turbo at 3540, it's really maxed out, so there's no point going over 40. So that's where my set point is at. Um, and then the final one, probably the most important, is your max EGT set point. So I have mine at 1350. Um, 1400 is getting real hot. 1500 is, you pretty much don't wanna see 1500s. Um, so I got mine at 1350 to be safe. And to be honest right now, with my setup, I, I don't get higher than 1150. So I'm not even close to it, but if for some reason, you know, it is winter time, so maybe on a hot day, we'll see if it changes. But if I can get it hot enough to where it's at 1350, it'll automatically start defueling, and that'll instantly cool down the engine and allow it to cool back down into a, you know, a normal range that you want to see your EGTs at. So that's how the back downs work. Go back to the manual here. Okay, so your next light, this next indicator that is not on right now, that is your alarm. Okay, so you can set certain alarms for this to, to register where if you if your fuel pressure drops below a certain PSI or your engine coolant temp gets higher than a certain PSI or any any, any sensor you could pretty much think of, you know, um, if your fuel pressure gets low, if your engine oil pressure gets low, so what you want to do is click your home button which will take you into settings or main menu and then from there you're going to go to settings. From there, you're gonna go to alert settings. Okay, so these are all the alerts that you can set. So, you know, accelerator, pedal position, your back down percentage, uh, battery temp, battery voltage, corrective speed, engine cooling temp. It just goes on and on and on. So there's lots and lots and lots of alarms that you can set. And what happens is once you have it at a set point, so you don't want it to drop below a certain level or you don't want a certain temperature to raise above a certain level, you set that set point. And the minute it gets over that set point, not only will this beep if you have the alarm on, but it'll also have that red light that'll come on, kind of as like an indicator telling you something's wrong. And it'll kind of alert you to your gauges and you'll be able to see whether it's your oil pressure that's too low or, you know, whatever. Okay, so you're allowed to have eight alert settings at one time. Anything over eight and it's gonna make you disable one of them. Um, and then you've got to enable another one. So you can't have more than eight alert settings on. So like I have battery voltage, we go into this. I have it set up, so if it goes below nine volts, it'll set off an alarm. And it'll also show up red on that indicator light. Uh, my engine coolant temp, if it gets above 220, same thing, it'll alert me. I got my oil pressure. I pretty much did all the things that I felt were important to me. Uh, oil pressure, if it gets below 15 PSI, it'll alert me. I got my fuel level. This is kind of like, I was just playing around the other day, which is why I set this up. It's kind of nice though, it'll actually send an alarm out, so if you're not paying attention to your fuel gauge, this thing will actually start beeping. Um, I got my Juice EGT, and again, I got mine set at 1350 for the alarm as well. So not only will it defuel at 1350, but it'll also set the alarm at 1350. I got my Trans Temp. I have that set at 210, so after 210 it'll alert me. My lift pump PSI, this is an important one, very important. I have it at six PSI. Factory, it had it set at five PSI. I bumped it up one to six PSI because I don't even want to get to five. You know, if I could stay above five, I'll be happy. Right now I got the stock lift pump and it does pretty decent. Um, I got the in-tank pump and it was brand new. It was just replaced when I got the truck. So I will be upgrading the lift pump, but not right now as the pressures are pretty decent. You know, they're not spectacular by any means, but they're good enough to, you know, drive the truck as is for right now. So, uh, but yeah, if it gets below six PSI, it'll set off that alarm, which is great. So, you know, you're not gonna hurt your BP44. And I got my boost pressure. So I got that set at 36. I should actually set this at 40 because I have my defueling set at 40. Okay, so that's at 40. And I only did that at 40 because my defueling for my turbo boost is at 40. So you want those to match. So anyway, there is your uh, alert settings, okay? Let's get back to the home screen here. That'll take care of that yellow indicator light. Now see, I'm at 150 right now. My back down percentage is at 11. So at 155, I believe it is, this back down, yep, there it goes. So I just went to zero. So now I'm full, whatever my tune is, I'm getting full fueling for it. So that's nice, and as you've seen, that yellow light went off. So telling me my engine's warmed up and I have no back down or defueling going on right now. So yeah, that's those two indicator lights. This obviously number five here, this is how you change your tunes up and down. So level four, level three, level two, and level one. I've been running mine on five. You get the best fuel economy at five because it does the most timing advancements. 
um, at five, and it just it gives you a lot more power, so you you can stay out of the throttle a lot more, uh, which gives you a lot better fuel economy. Um, as long as you stay out of the pedal. If you're in the pedal heavily, and quite often, you will definitely not save any fuel on five. But if you're light on the pedal and can control your foot, you will save fuel on five. Okay, so the next most important thing that I want to talk to you about as far as the tuning goes. So I want to go back to settings, main menu, settings. Okay, and then you go to juice settings. It's a thing called low boost response. It's exactly what his title suggests. So what it is, is it's, it's how much fueling you want the truck to have down low. So when you first start getting on the throttle and you're at low RPMs, it's how much fuel do you want to give it and how soon do you want to give it. So basically, the higher the number you go, you can start from setting one through five. And the higher you choose, the more fueling it's gonna give it. So basically, the higher in number you go, the faster it's gonna fuel it, per the boost you're seeing on the turbo. Um, okay, so on five by five, it'll start fueling immediately, even before you start building boost. That's how you're gonna be getting your, you know, as much fueling as you possibly can. Um, most guys will run it at like five by four, which that's a nice setting too, because you know it kind of limits that fuel down low, so you won't get as much smoke. Five by five, you're all out, balls to the wall. So, uh, but that's how that works. Here's your 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 power level is your actual tune. So you got one through five, okay, on the left side, and the right side is your low boost response. So again, this could be one one or one three. It's whatever you want it to be. So you can play around with these settings, play around with your low boost response, and figure out exactly where you want to be and, and what works for you. I max mine all out at five, and then that way from there, if I feel like I got too much power down low, I can just dial it back. So say for setting three, I like the toe on, I can click that setting three. Say I'm getting too much smoke or my EGTs are getting too hot on level three, I could turn this down to like three by two and try that, or three by three. But right now I got everything set at five. I haven't done a whole lot of messing around with this quite yet because I haven't towed anything yet. And level five by five for me is like perfect right now. So, but that's how your low boost response works. That is the other most important thing about this. Um, I'm not gonna bore you guys too much with other settings. The other main thing I want to tell you guys is there is two screens here. So you could set up basically two different screens you could scroll left and right and you could set your gauges up how you want you could set how many gauges you want to see um, this is the one I usually leave my truck at when it's warming up so I can get more parameters um, you know I still got my EGT I got my fuel pressure those are the two most important to me um, and then I got my engine coolant temperature and my back down because I like to see them together I like to kind of watch as my engine warms up what back down percentage I'm at um, I also like to see what gear I'm in often, and I like to see my real speedo. Since I have two times oversized tires on this, I like to see my real speed, so that's another part one. So if I'm going for long cruises, I'll leave it on this screen, or if my engine's cold. If I'm just, if I'm warmed up and I'm just scooting around town, I'll leave it on this screen, because the only things that matter to me are my EGT temp and my fuel pressure. Um, I did, I did have the boost here in the middle, but I don't need that in the middle anymore. Let's talk about the gauges for a second. I bought a mechanical boost gauge because I feel that the gauges on this monitor are really good, but being that they're all electronic, you could have gauges that are, say, a little bit laggy or a little bit slow. Uh, fuel pressure is not one that matters or not one you notice. Um, EGT is not one that matters really and not one you notice. See how fast it climbs? I mean, it's really not laggy. As far as the other sensors go, obviously your engine coolant temperature, it's not changing up and down all that often. Tranny temp, all those other gauges, they really don't change all that often. So the only two that are really changing quickly, the only three I should say, are your EGT, your boost, and your fuel pressure. Like I said, EGT doesn't bother me, fuel pressure doesn't bother me, but the boost did. The boost on this gauge felt very laggy to me. Um, I was building boost before this thing was even telling me I was building boost. I would let off of it. It was still saying I was seeing 20 PSI like a couple seconds after. And that to me drives me nuts because I want to see it immediately. You know, when I lock my foot off, I want to see it drop. When I punch it, I want to see it go up. So for me, I like to see a mechanical boost gauge. That kind of drove me nuts. But other than that, the gauges in this thing are great. Um, they're fantastic. It was just me being picky about the boost gauge and that's the only gauge I was picky about. So it's always a good thing to have a mechanical boost gauge as well because the way this reads your boost level is off your map sensor. So if my map sensor were to be off or say it was to start to fail, I wouldn't know it 
So now that I have a mechanical boost gauge as well, if this one's reading 30 and this is only reading 15 or 20, then I know I got an issue with my map sensor. So it's always good to have two boost gauges regardless. Um, but now I'm just able to see my boost on the fly, you know, immediately. When I punch it, I can see this thing instantly come up. Um, as far as how accurate this is, currently with my my um, edge, it's almost spot on. It's within like a one PSI or two PSI of each other um, at all times, you know. It's just, I gotta allow this to catch up with this to actually see where I, you know, how accurate this was, you know, when I tested it. But as far as that goes, the rest is pretty good. If you go into performance tests, you can do a zero, zero to 60, a quarter mile horsepower test. So it'll actually kind of act like a dyno and give you horsepower and torque numbers. Um, it'll give you a quarter mile time and it'll give you a zero to 60. What I'm gonna do is do the zero to 60. I'm gonna do it on stock and then I'm gonna do it on five by five, just to kind of show you guys a difference in comparison from stock to five by five with the edge. Okay, I'm at a stop light or a stop sign. I just wanna show you guys real quick the zero to 60, how it works. This is what I'm gonna be using to do our test. So if you go into zero to 60, it'll say, please stop. And then it'll say, accelerate to 60 mile an hour. So let me just take off here. It's real slow. And you can see as I'm going now, it's got a timer and it also shows you those dots. And the faster you go, basically the more, you know, the dots are gonna go higher and higher. So as you start to complete the test, Right now, I'm not gonna go up to 60, but if I were to hit 60, this would all stop. It would tell me how many, how much time it took me to get to 60. Um, and it'll tell you what distance it did it in. So this is the test I'm gonna use. I'm gonna first use it on stock form, and then I'm gonna do the edge five by five, and we will see what kind of difference I get as far as the times go from zero to 60. So let me get pulled over and get on a road where I can actually do 60, and we'll go from there. Okay guys, now before I start this test, I'm actually gonna break the level zero, which is stock. Okay, so I'm on zero as you can see. So before I do this test, I just wanna talk about what mods I have done to the truck. It's pretty stock. Um, I have the I have a res delete done. I have a BHAF filter on it, which is basically a heavy duty air filter from you know a big piece of equipment like an excavator with a Cummins engine in it. Um, but in a ton of air. And I, I believe personally that they're better than any k &N filter that you can buy. So I have that on there, I have the Res Delete, and I have the Edge Use with Attitude CS2. So that, those are the mods I have. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. And I have my tires are oversized by two sizes. The tire size is in this, so it recalculates the, um, the PCM, so it knows exactly what speed I'm doing. I'm pretty much just gonna hold it right here. And this will tell me how, it'll tell you guys how fast I'm going and how fast I hit 60 at. And you'll also be able to see how much boost I'm making. Um, this gauge maxes out at 35 PSI. I usually hit right around 30 PSI. So let me get pulled on the road. We'll do a stock test, zero to 60. It's a relatively flat road. So no worries there. Okay, so I'm gonna go to menu. I'm gonna go to performance tests. And I'm gonna go zero to 60. Okay, it says begin. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Looks like we did zero to 60 in 10.7 seconds. If you guys can see that there. Okay, there's the distance I did it in, 580, okay, 580 feet, and I, and I hit 60 mile an hour. Okay, so now let me turn around. I'm gonna go to the exact same spot in the road, and I'm gonna go the exact same direction so that the tests are identical. If there was any kind of slopes I was going up or down, I'm gonna be going up or down the exact same slopes. To head back okay so 10.7 remember that i'm gonna get out of this back out i'm gonna increase my tune from stock all the way to level five okay so now we're gonna be on level five by five really i'm kind of afraid to get into it all the way so if i feel like the tranny's gonna slip because i don't want to slip my clutches the minute you start slipping clutches in these transmissions, it'll send all the particles through the rest of the transmission. It'll just pretty much smoke the tranny. So if I feel like it's gonna slip, I'm gonna let off and I may do it just out of instinct. 
because I don't want it to, I don't want it to hammer gears when it upshifts so I may let out of it a few times but it should be a pretty accurate test just know that whatever number I get here it could probably be a lot quicker had I just stayed in it I very rarely will punch it from a start actually this will be the first time I've actually punched it from a start and stayed on it just don't want to smoke my tranny that's all it does have the updated internals but it's not built and it was rebuilt recently okay so we're on level five if you guys can see we're gonna go to performance tests i'm gonna try to keep my phone as stable as i can all right zero to 60. okay here we go Looks like we hit it in 8.2 seconds. Okay guys, I had someone behind me. So if you could see here, these are my numbers. I don't even know where I was at as far as speed. I just didn't want to let out of it. I want to make sure I was well over 60 when I let out. So the test was accurate. I probably let out at like 80 to be honest with you. Because I was just looking at my phone to make sure I was holding it stable. But anyway, that's the numbers I got on Edge Comp 5x5 or stock. definitely makes a big difference i'm super impressed i'm really happy with this edge unit man i got somebody riding my butt everywhere i go tonight yeah i'm, I'm real happy with this programmer so let me pull back into my house and i'll catch back up with you guys okay we're officially back at the house so looks like I did the distance in 446. I believe the uh, the distance before was like five something, 500 and maybe 50. I have to go back to the footage and look, but it's probably gonna be like a 50 foot, maybe even a hundred foot difference. I can't really remember what it was at. It was at 500 something, I believe. Uh, and I think it was at like 10 seconds, 10 five or something. I don't know, I can't remember. Zero to 60 in 8.2 seconds. I think that's pretty good for a big heavy truck like this. Uh, especially with the upgrades that I have done to it. And that's with letting out. I would assume that that would be pretty much an eight second time if I didn't let out of it. it I probably would have hit zero to 60 in eight seconds. Hopefully I went through enough of this with you guys. One more quick thing I want to talk about is uh, it does have data logging, which is great. Um, if you go into settings, it's just got so much. It's got, you know, mileage coach, which gives you uh, fuel mileage um, benefits. You can average your mile per gallon out and it'll tell you your best mile per gallon and that kind of thing. You can go to main menu, you can go to records. What this does is it holds your highest or lowest. I hit 30 PSI. Um, my engine cool temperature got to 200 degrees. I did zero to 60 in 8.2 seconds. My highest EGT was only pretty much 1100 degrees. My fuel temperature was 109, which isn't bad. And that's the, the fuel temperature inside the BP44 module, your injection pump. My lowest fuel pressure was six, which isn't bad, being that I got a stock car lift pump. The juice module itself was 93 degrees. Juice transmission fluid temperature was only 159 degrees. 82 mile an hour I got up to. So when I finally let off on that second test, I was at 82. I got up to 3000 RPM. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that. Now I can go and clear these all so I can start over. And that zeroes everything back out. It's just a nice thing to have. It's another nice feature that this thing gives you. Um, if I go to accessory settings, this does come with a turbo timer. So you go to turbo cool down setup and you can set up the turbo timer to either turn off or turn on used by the EGT. So if you turn it on by EGT, you could pretty much set a limit. I have mine on a timer. I just leave it at about a minute and a half. So this truck will run for a minute and a half after I turn the key off and take it out. And then it'll automatically shut itself down, which is nice. It allows oil to pass through the turbo to cool the turbo down after you've run it hard. Even just normal driving, it's good to do because it allows the turbo to completely cool down before it shuts off. Because once you shut the engine off, there's no more oil flow to the turbo 
and it's just bad on the bearings and it's bad on the seals because the turbo will be shut off hot. Um, and I'll show you guys what I mean by that. So, shut my vehicle off here. As you can see, it stays running. It'll usually have these lights that'll come up on a dash just because the truck really doesn't know why it's still on. <laughs> and it'll run here for about a minute and then it'll shut itself off. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want me to do any other videos like this, just let me know in the comments below and I'll do it for you. All right, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.